Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm dealing with a lowrider airplane. The landing gear struts for my 1967 Piper Cherokee 180C are all out of whack. The nose strut is too long, and the main struts are too short. The result is that the plane sits tail low on the ground, affecting the takeoff and landing performance. I want my plane to become respectable again, so why don't you join me as we adjust the struts on my Piper PA-28. I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. Today we're working with high pressure air and a plane that weighs close to one ton. You can pinch your fingers in the suspension if it decides to drop at the wrong time. The high pressure air can blow hydraulic fluid into your eyes. And always remember that servicing the struts is one of only a few maintenance tasks that a certificated pilot who, that owns and operates the airplane can perform. Everything else requires an A&P mechanic. If you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. And if you don't feel comfortable doing any of these activities, then don't. Now, let's get started. The Piper PA-28 is a very popular aircraft. It was initially type certificated in 1960 and is still in production today. Its tricycle landing gear features oleo struts on each wheel to provide cushion support and damping for the aircraft. The height of the landing gear is important to safety and performance during takeoff and landing. If the struts are too short, the impacts of the landing will not be absorbed by the struts and will instead be transferred directly to the airframe. Gear that's too tall is weaker and can cause more landing bounce. When the height of the gear is inconsistent, the plane doesn't sit level on the runway. This can cause control and performance issues during takeoffs and landings. Oleo struts use high pressure nitrogen or air to provide the spring rate to store energy of landing and hydraulic oil to provide damping to minimize bouncing on landing. The damping coefficient is variable over the length of the strut, increasing as the strut is compressed. The length of the strut when it's at rest is determined by the amount of air in it. The airplane manufacturer specifies the height of the strut at rest to provide the best performance for spring rate and damping. For my plane, Piper specified the main strut should have four and one half inches of tube exposed on the main gear and three and one quarter inches exposed for the nose gear. Currently, my struts are far from that. The main strut only has about two inches exposed and the nose gear has over seven inches. As a result, the nose is high and the tail low. This causes additional drag during the takeoff roll, increasing takeoff distance. You might wonder how the nose gear got so inflated. A couple of years ago, during the annual inspection, the mechanic noticed that the front strut was a little low, so he added a little nitrogen. The gear is sticky and the front strut didn't immediately respond to the increased pressure. After a few operations, the nose gear found its equilibrium and settled to an extension of 7 inches. I thought it looked high, but figured it must be right since it had been serviced professionally. Also, I thought the nitrogen would quickly leak out of the strut, but that didn't happen. Fast forward a couple years, and I decided to research struts in more detail. I got a service manual and determined the proper extensions for the nose and main struts. I also confirmed that 14 CFR 43 Appendix A Part C allows me, as a private pilot and owner, to service the air and oil in the struts. But how do I do that? Online resources came to the rescue. The struts are pressurized using a Schrader valve, just like on a tire that's located on the top of the strut. The air pressure of the strut when it's supporting the plane is over 175 pounds per square inch, so a normal air compressor won't work since it's only capable of producing about 120 PSI. The options for supplying high pressure air include a high pressure nitrogen bottle and regulator, a pressure multiplier pump, or a manual strut pump. I ruled out the nitrogen bottle since I didn't want to have all that equipment for something I would only need to perform once every year or so. Also, I heard that it was difficult to meter how much nitrogen to put into the strut. 
Pressure multiplier pumps connect to a conventional air compressor. The regular compressed air acts on a large diameter piston, which compresses a small diameter piston. The output pressure of the small diameter piston is proportional to the ratio between the areas of the large and small pistons. The multiplier pump is good at metering high pressure air since it's triggered one stroke at a time. Since they're pretty expensive, I thought about making one. That would have been a great video, but I would have still had over $100 into it. Finally, I decided to purchase a manual strut pump. I found one on Amazon capable of delivering up to 4,500 PSI at a reasonable price. I could also use it as a manual tire pump if needed. Let's put it together. This is the Vivor high pressure hand pump and cost me about $46 on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description below. It was packed well and assembly was very straightforward. First, I removed some plastic swarth from the high pressure output and gauge connections. Then I put one wrap of Teflon tape on the pressure gauge and installed it. First, I tried the supplied tool, but that drove me crazy, so I used my own open end wrench. Next, I connected the high pressure hose. I did not use tape since this was a different type of connection. It's only about 18 inches long and features a quick connect fitting at the end. Finally, I attached the handle using the included screws and Allen wrench. The pump also includes a full set of replacement seals, O-rings, and oil for service in the future. The instructions said I should operate the pump 100 times with the bleed valve open. I assumed to break it in. After tightening the bleed valve and inserting the hose plug, I pumped up the pressure to about 2,000 PSI. I have no doubt it could go higher, but I'm not strong enough to get there. Besides, I only need 200 PSI. Okay, now that the pump is assembled, let's adjust the struts. I designed and 3D printed some go, no-go gauges for measuring the strut length. My first goal is to reduce the nose strut tube extension from 7 inches to 3 and 1 quarter inches. I let a little air out of the front strut, but there was no movement. So I let a little more air out. And then some more. Finally, I rocked the plant and... Oh crap, this gear is a little sticky. I removed too much air. Well, that's why I didn't adjust the front strut until I had a way of filling it up. So I attached the pump to the strut Schrader valve, found a sturdy support to pump against, and started pumping. Every few strokes I would grab the prop and rock the plane so the strut would reach equilibrium. After a couple minutes of pumping, the strut finally started moving up. Over the next five minutes, I pumped and checked the strut length until it reached the proper height of about three and a quarter inches. Both main gear struts were low, so I had to add air right from the beginning. Access is a little easier since all I had to do was remove an access plug on the top of the, each wing to reach the Schrader valves. I put a piece of plywood with some padding on top of the wing so I wouldn't cause any damage while I used the pump. I connected the air hose to the right strut and started pumping. I kept pumping and checking, and pumping and checking, but there was no movement. Finally, after a big bounce, the gear extended way too high. I guess all the gear are sticky. I let out some air and bounced it again, and got close to the proper four and a half inch tube extension. I couldn't seem to fine tune the length, so I called it good. I had a similar experience with the left side. I couldn't fine tune the length. Either I would overinflate or underinflate. Eventually I got close, but to get closer I had to take a different approach. The only variable I can control is the number of pump strokes I put into each strut. So I figured I had to sneak up on the proper extension from below. I'll take the plane up one time around the pattern and then measure the strut extension after I land. I'll add air as necessary and take it around the pattern again until I get to the specified extension. First I had to clean the struts so they wouldn't be quite so sticky. I brushed the really dirty areas of the exposed strut tubes with a brass brush. Then I wiped each strut tube with a cloth moistened with a little mill 5606 hydraulic fluid, the same fluid that's inside the strut. I put together a table where I could record the strut extensions and number of pump strokes. Then I took the plane out and started capturing data. 
After just a couple operations, I determined one stroke of the strut pump resulted in about one quarter inch of main strut extension. With that information, it was then relatively simple to dial into the proper strut extension. The result is a nice level plane that has a much quicker takeoff roll. It made such a big difference that I had to change my initial trim settings for takeoff. I consider this a real success and I'm looking forward to keeping my struts properly adjusted in the future. Thanks for joining me today. We adjusted the oleo struts of my 1967 Piper Cherokee Watt ADC. The result is a plane that has much better takeoff characteristics. For 14 CFR 43 Appendix A Part C, you can do this maintenance yourself if you're the pilot and owner. Just make sure you make an entry into your airframe logbook that you perform the service yourself. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon.